Happy Friday and welcome to today's TriCast, TriStream, Tri Product Strategy situation. Uh, I'm Rick Vanover and I'm joined by uh, Kirsten and Melissa. How are you doing, Kirsten? I'm doing good. It's a beautiful day here in Columbus, Ohio, like every Friday is normally. So I'm excited to be back. It's been a, a couple months maybe since my last LinkedIn Live, so this is exciting. Yeah, it's been a wee spot rusty with the Kirsten up in here, so it's good to have you back. And uh, and V Miss rocking it once again with me. Hello. How are you, Melissa? I'm good. Awesome. So Kirsten dropped that she's in Ohio. We all know Melissa's representing Jersey, but we want to know where you're from. Uh, we've also got our producers in in the ATL and in Romania. But let's uh, let's do our little map thing. So go into the chat of the stream that you're watching and and Katie and the others are watching the the feeds let's go ahead and drop in your country or your US state and we will uh maplicate I think that's a word I'm good enough with that An application of course it is yeah we're gonna maplicate all right so we got a interesting topic a little bit different today we're gonna go back to our roots we got three people we got three demos and we're gonna talk about a TLA a three-letter acronym what's the topic du jour Kirsten uh, the topic is uh, the great RTO, and That's... that means recovery time objectives. Exactly. And I'm going to talk about today uh, one, of, one of the cool things that helps you achieve great recovery time objectives is replication and using that uh, when a disaster happens. Indeed, indeed. So, Melissa, let's jump over to slides here and, yes. and, and demo wizardry that I have here. So I'm going to have you, uh, Melissa, kind of... Give me the definition. Break it down for me. What does RTO uh, mean? According to, to Wikipedia, <laughs> uh, I'll give you the Melissa PD answer. The uh, RTO is basically just how long does it take you to recover, right? How long is it from when you go down to when your applications are operational again? Pretty simple. Did you just say the Melissa Pedia? Melissa Pedia, yes. It's no, new. No. Well, the Wikipedia was there first, just so you know. Oh, excuse me. And the Rictionary, all right? But uh, <laughs> we went to the authoritative Wikipedia, and actually, straight up, I did like this diagram. In it is nice. It, it's simple. It works for uh, verbalizing and visualizing. Can I throw in something crazy to this? It's not on the slide, Bring just the for burn. people to keep in their minds. So if you add your RPO and your RTO together, they cannot exceed your SLA. Oh, math, oh. algebra. We might have to. We might have to come back and do another session on this. But uh, think, SLA is a number that service level agreement is another number of that gets thrown around a lot, and it's kind of like uh, how much downtime, basically, right? Yeah. And you got to make sure that everything's in that window. I'm gonna I'm gonna break your math. We're gonna go integral on it here. And what would be this red line here? I, I, wanna, this. I know. I want to insert a different part, which is just deciding what to do, and then collectively that's what i would call the total time to resolution right because and then that really should be bound by the sla too because sometimes you don't know how to get out of a problem and that brings up a whole another thing about all the different ways <laughs> disaster recovery plans <laughs> disaster. did i say that again on tv sorry. no sorry okay anyway <laughs> well i love this picture it just says incident so much yeah. more it's, it's pretty disaster pretty boom it looks pretty hot in the core but um anyways what we're going to do here today oh i lost my screen no i didn't okay what we're going to do is actually talk about and we're going to go into some demos we're going to talk about some specific capabilities and so i'm going to start with kirsten with uh you know a little piece of trivia beam backup and replication backup and replication so kirsten before we get into the demo tell us why you like replication as something that truly embodies the spirit of the RTO. Yeah, well, replication is a really good way to hit RTOs because it's going to have that virtual machine uh, ready for you in a ready to start state. So really, the, the basically when a disaster happens, the amount of time that um, you're thinking about the recovery time objective to get that machine back up and running is really going to be the amount of time to you know start the machine up and running, but also anything that machine relies on as well, um, any type of processes or services or anything like that. Um, so replication is really cool. And what's cool is Veeam's had replication now for the beginning of time, right? Uh, is it all, it's, I think it's always been Veeam backup and replication. Has it really? Uh, <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, even from V1. That's true. That'll win you a bet at a bar, friends. That's right. V Backup and Replication version one was, in fact, I think I still have some of those old school two in one stickers back here with the old logo with the skinny swoosh and all that. But yeah, no, it was always a backup and replication product. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, you have your backups, you have your replication. Um, so, and then with replica replication, you have failover, failover plans, fail back, undo failover. So it really gives you a variety of options to um, use in your business in any type of scenario um, that you need. And you don't want to forget the orchestration options, especially with Veeam Disaster Recovery Orchestrator. Just being able to create that replica plan in the orchestrator, uh, make sure that you have your virtual machines ready to start in the order that you want them to start. And then when that disaster happens, being able to, you know, click that button to start your recovery plan or your replica plan, sorry, and, um, you know, start booting up those machines. And then it helps also with, you know, documentation as well for those key business stakeholders. So it, replication just doesn't stop with being back up in replication. I love replication. It it continues with Veeam Disaster Recovery Orchestrator. And what we're going to talk about a little bit later is um, really uh, Melissa is going to take control and she's going to show you how to really get those best RPOs as well um, with Veeam. So nice. that's good. Yeah. I, yeah. And you, you set it up well. A two in one comes from Veeam backup and replication. You can do better with Orchestrator. Melissa and I have, you know, been on a on a kind of a, a theme here. Before we go into the demo, the producers just let me know that the application is ready. So let's take a quick look at the application. We've got a great show. And again, if you're just joining us, drop in the chat, whatever stream that you're in, the um, US state, and then also the country that you're in. We've got uh, Denver, Wisconsin, Iowa, Indiana, Texas, Massachusetts, New York, and someone up in Canada is joining us. Welcome. Over in Europe, we have the UK, we have Romania still, we got France, and we've got Italy. Welcome, welcome. And down in South America, Peru and Mexico. I, ah, somebody from Brazil's got to show up, guys. Uh, come on, come on. And let's head on over to Africa here. And we've got Kenya, South Africa, Palestine, and Israel. And over in APJ, Thailand is rocking it. You know, I'm in the mood for some Tom Yum soup, friends. That would be perfect on a chilly day like this. Awesome. All right, Kirsten. So let's head back over to the demo and walk us through what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this is a Veeam Backup and Replication console, as you can see. We have a replication job running. And I just want to quickly walk through the wizard to show you how easy it is to get this job started. You're going to choose a name. And then you're also going to have some advanced controls to help speed up processing of the replication job. Choose your virtual machine, and then you're going to choose your destination. Choose a host and a resource pool, a, a data store, and more here. You're also going to have some additional job settings that you can set on the next screen as well. Just to choose the repository, repository to keep the replica metadata. You have data transfer settings. By default, we have it to automatic selection for the proxies. Uh, I, this demo is definitely going really fast. Make sure you choose the scheduler here. Uh, you can do it periodically, every hour, um, continuously, et cetera. So if you haven't set up a replication job, that's how easy it is to get started. Um, and then when your replication job has run and your replication is replica is ready, you're going to go to this little spot within the console here. And you're going to see that um, our replica job in our virtual machine is ready. And you have some options, failover now, plan failover, add to a failover plan, restore to a guest file. Restore a guest file. So let's say, let's just check and see if our replica is ready in a vSphere. So that's the resource pool I'm storing my replica in. And you can see that it is ready and that our this is our production environment. Can you pause the, the video real quick? Sorry. Yeah, and I, I will let I you know. Like this, I feel like we this are, is like speed, yeah. sped up point two. Are you playing it's a trick not on me? Sped up. <laughs> it's not sped up. But we just, for the viewers, we do uh, we do embed the videos here just because of the context switching and live is live. We want to make it work. But oh, Kirsten geez. even said it might be a little. Uh, yeah, I think you were just testing me to see how fast I could talk, Rick. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> no, so so what did you do? You powered off that running virtual machine, and yeah. now we're going to go back into the ready replica, and you're going to start doing stuff. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So basically, I wanted to show you within vSphere that um, my replica machine was ready. My virtual machine, my production virtual machine, for some reason, you know, it went down. It's powered off. So let's fail over to our replica. This is the simple process to get started. There's going to be some steps here. You're going to see the replica power on. And on the left hand, you're going to see an active um, replica running, and you're going to actually see that power on. You can see it now. Um, it's, it's, it's ready for us to get back up and running. And that's how easy it is to fail over. And let's see if our let's switch back into vSphere and see if that machine is actually you know up and running. Let's test it. So we're gonna switch back into vSphere. And let's find our machine. Oh, look, it's already running for us. Took no time at all, really. That was just a test virtual machine. Um, but it really didn't take much time at all for that virtual machine to get up and running. So when you think about recovery time objectives, that's you know pretty fast. And then once you fail over, you're going to have some additional steps. If you could pause it one more time. Okay, I'm trying, trying, trying. Oh. Okay, cool. Oh, yes. So you're going to have be able to permanently fail over to that replication, that replica machine. Um, this is going to be used in situations when your productions production site is totally unavailable. So you can permanently fail over to that replica. You can undo the failover. So this isn't going to change. It's not going to, if you undo the failover, it's not going to, any of the changes that occur on that replica machine isn't going to be transferred into that production machine at all. So keep that in mind when you're undoing a failover that any of the changes occurring on that replica machine while it's running, it's not going to be inserted back into the original VM. You can add it to a failover plan. This is just going to allow you to make a plan and have a boot order in line for which machine you want to start in a row. And then you can fail back to production. And this is when you want to fail back to that original machine, but it's going to actually take all the changes that occurred during that time that replica machine was running and insert it back into the original machine. So these are the, some of the different options you have when you're performing a replica failover. Uh, within your disaster recovery uh, environment. And what's really cool is that this is all streamlined through Theme Disaster Recovery Orchestrator. So you can all do it automatically. You don't even have to do any of this manual processing, really. So you know, the beautiful, the beautiful thing here, Kirsten, is that the recovery time objective was so fast that I had to pause the video. Do you, do you not catch the <laughs> irony here? That is a little um, ironic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so for, for the viewers out here, you know, what we did, we set up a replica, wizard driven, and we failed it over. And then, you know, you get these additional handling options. And I think it's really important to keep replication in the mix because you never know how you want to go. And I'm talking about failover. But there's a different type of replication that, you know what, maybe we want to go a different direction and the recovery point objective come in, comes into play. And so, Melissa, talk about door number two. Well, here's the problem, right? Door number two is Veeam's continuous data protection, which came out in V11. And Kirsten did such a great job of showing you a regular replica failover. When I just show you what CDP looks like kind of from a configuration aspect, like how we can get those near zero RPOs, it's going to look almost exactly the same. So once you've done one thing in Beam, you've configured a backup or a replica or anything, you're pretty much ready to protect all the different tiers of data almost the exact same way, right? There's very subtle differences between all of the wizards and subtle differences in configuration based on that RPO or RTO you're targeting. So this is going to look and feel a lot like what Kirsten just showed you, actually, which is a good thing, right? This is easy. Yeah, you ready? Let's do it. Absolutely, let's go. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so I am like half blind, and this is hard to see, but basically this is my CDP policy I have set up. I can't spell Linux, as you can say. I see I spelled it wrong, but we give it a name. Uh, we select any virtual machines. I have a Linux machine. Select the destination, just like a regular replica, right? No changes there. 
data transfer, all that good stuff. Schedule, here's where the differences come in, right? RPO, look at that. I'm measuring that in seconds. I have a 12 second RPO for this VM. And then I have short term retention points, which are just basically, okay, how long do I want to keep that 12 seconds of data for, right? So I'm going to keep three hours worth of that 12 second interval. I also have longer term retention points as well. And uh, I might want to keep those a little longer. But let's go in and actually see what it looks like when we want to maybe uh, run a CDP job or what our options are when we actually want to do that failover. So if I click into this right here, I'll click failover. Here's the cool part, right? I select my VM, we're good to go. Recovery point, you can see me actually kind of move this slider and pick with granularity, right? Look at this granularity, 12 second intervals. Where do I actually want to recover to? Which is just super amazing, right? Really, really aggressive RTOs and RPOs, and I still have the flexibility to go back a little further in time based on what the issue is, right? Because maybe it's an, we have to recover a VM for a certain issue, we have to switch to our replica, but we didn't catch it in time, right? Something happened before the disaster. So I actually need to go back five minutes instead of 12 seconds, right? I have that 12 second interval whenever I need it to. So CDP is actually pretty simple to use, pretty simple to configure. And like Kirsten said, with Veeam Disaster Recovery Orchestrator, we can kind of layer orchestration on top of things and get things like automatic documentation, um, the ability to use a really easy HTML5 interface and hand that over to the ops team, right? We have a role in orchestrator for ops. Or also, basically, all you can do is go in and hit that big red button. You don't have to worry about, oh, well, they have access to everything and they're changing settings or anything. It's just go. Now, here's but, the question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's great, but don't do not do everything this way. I think that's pretty CDP sage all the things. No, just kidding. CDP all the things. Said nobody ever. You know, yeah, so, so, so. Here, here's like the CDP tax, right? And it's not even that bad, but it's a replica, right? So we're replicating everything to our disaster recovery site. And the thing is um, storage, right? So I said, we're keeping that 12 second interval for three hours, not that much data, but when you are configuring CDP, you do need to understand your application's change rate so you can make sure that you have enough storage to keep all those retention points, however you configure them, right? Whether you're keeping that 12 seconds for three hours and then longer term retention points. So storage um, is kind of the quality that you have to keep an eye on with CDP replication. But other than that, super simple to uh, configure and use. I can confirm that we are getting a 12 second RPO on that VM in my lab in nested VCR following Veeam's worst practices. <laughs> like no matter what I do, I cannot break this thing. Like it uh. is pretty incredible. Yeah, we ought to rename our lab the Worst Practices Lab. Yeah, we have the Worst Practices Lab, absolutely. I, that I think that might actually just stick there, Melissa. I think <laughs> it uh, is very fitting. All right, so we've shown you two different high-speed recovery options. Again, recovery time objective. We've spoken so much about the backups, but what about the recoveries? And so Melissa and Kirsten both showcased two different types of replication, but let's go to door number three. I'm going to go into Ooh, application. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. So, and, and these are just three examples. On, on the chart I have on the wall, there's 91 ways to recover, right? So we can, we, can, we can do this all month if you want. But the reality is some of the enterprise apps you might have, let's say Active Directory, kind of important nowadays. Just a little bit. Yeah, we can have some high speed recovery for this enterprise application as well. Now, I'm going to show you in a second Veeam Explorer for Active Directory, but keep in mind there's also Veeam Explorer for SQL Server, Veeam Explorer for Oracle, in addition to the Oracle RMAN plugin. Let's see what else am I missing? SharePoint. I feel like I'm missing one. Exchange. Exchange. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, M365 has made me kind of forget all of it. <laughs> All right, and by the way, I gotta give Melissa and Kirsten mega, mega props both for dropping in and zoom it. I'm, I love it. It's like just making me all, uh, or was that all you, Kirsten, or was that? That was all Kirsten. Kirsten gets the zoom it credit. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. Rick is the, the master of zoom it, so you have to learn from the best, right? Well, yeah, I give you two gold <laughs> stars because you captured them both with zoom it. So, all right, so let's look here, first of all. What I'm looking at, is Active Directory Administrative Center. This is the new ADUC, right? Active Directory Users and Computers. So um, 
Kirsten, why don't you pick a letter um, before D? A. Uh, how about C? C. C sounds okay. great. Yeah, let's go with C. All right, so I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to find two users that start with C, and let's go with Chris and Cheryl. Both nice people. Work, been Wonderful working humans, yes. For years. But let's destroy their accounts. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take these two Active Directory user accounts. I'm just going to delete it. All right, so right away, they're going to have <laughs> usability issues with their day-to-day -day experience. And let's let's actually not – Let's not pick anybody out in particular. Let's go and mess up the group policy as well and make everybody's device policy go rogue. All right. Doesn't that sound like a great day? Let's delete the group policy objects as well. So right now, these two users can't log in and, and function and all of the devices are going to be unmanaged. No fear. Let's go ahead and rock out Veeam Explorer for Active Directory. Now, this could be a VMware or a Hyper-V backup or a Windows agent. I'm going to rock it out from the agent. I'm going to select application item restore. Oh, I didn't even have to remember the list because it's right here. But the other apps are represented. Veeam Explorer for Active Directory is the one we're going to use here today. And then the other apps are represented. So let's find that domain controller. Uh, let's take the most recent uh, restore point. Always a great idea. Um, I could go backwards if it was a, you know, if this problem was manifested a few days later, but chances are this type of problem is going to be known right away. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do Veeam live stream. Always log these restore sessions, by the way. That's good information on your restore operator. <laughs> it is. It's great information when you put information yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> so let's crack open. the. What, what we actually do is open up the image based backup and we crawl the file system and we're going to open up the individual um, Active Directory database to then allow Veeam Explorer for Active Directory to revisualize AD from a recovery point of view. So let's crack into the users and let's pick on uh, the C users again, Chris and Cheryl. Um, now I'm going to select them both and I'm just going to go straight away, restore it right back to where it came from. But I could put it elsewhere or it could export items like and get into like some LDFD type you know, command line jams over in Active Directory world. But lickety quick, two objects were restored just like that. Now, remember, I broke more than just those two user experiences. Let's go over to the group policy objects. And I took the uh, HQ device policy and settings, group policy, same set of options. I could restore it back. But one of the other things that's really cool about the Veeam Explorer for AD is comparing attributes. So if something is changed, you can actually see some of the uh, attributes of, of the individual items before you change it, including like their tombstone and timestamps and stuff like that. Again, you want to pull it all back? Yes, lickety quick. And now we go back over to the source administrative tools. Guess what? I'm going to refresh. I've got my GPO and it's right back there. And, and notice the modified date. I don't know if you caught that stayed the same. Let's go ahead and refresh. And here we are from C to D. Cheryl and Chris are back in the party. And this is going to be transparent to their user experience. They don't need to reset their passwords or anything like that. So look at that. The great RTO. Ha, I like it. So as we wrap up, I think um, backup's important. Recovery is more. And, um, you know, let's start with you, Melissa. Any kind of closing thoughts on RTOs and Veeam? Yeah, absolutely. Take your recovery to the next level with Veeam Disaster Recovery Orchestrator, which will actually fully document your RPOs and RTOs for you. So you can always check and test that you are, in fact, meeting these numbers on a regular basis. Um, I use the word next level. I better clear that with the uh, product marketing manager. She first. actually says it's okay. She's because oh, Michelle's it herself. cool with it? Yes, Michelle's good. She started oh, using cool. it, believe it or not. Rock on. Uh, Kirsten, any parting words on RTOs? Yeah, I just want to, you know, unless I mention it, make sure you're testing your plans and everything. You don't want to have your RTO set for one hour, but your recovery takes longer than that. So just make sure you're you're testing. Cool, cool. Well, let's go back to the map. We got one more update here. I got the producers rocking away. We've got a couple more U.S. states. We've got, uh, let's see, uh, Panama and Brazil have joined us over there. And over in EMEA, we've had Spain, Netherlands, Portugal, and Poland join. 
Pakistan and India have joined as well. And we got a question from Stephen. Stephen's question is being typed for me as we talk here. Um, and before I forget two other things, uh, we did a poll. And thank you all for voting uh, for next week's episode. Believe it or not, we went uh, fill in the blank, rogue. We did a poll and they chose cloud mobility. So I don't know which of you two are going to be my victims. <clears throat> I mean, co-presenters with me uh, next week. It might be you, Melissa. It might be uh, Kirsten. It might be both. Who knows? Uh, Steve, I don't I don't have your question. Oh, here it is. Uh, Steve's question is data managed by Veeam immutable so it can't be encrypted after the facts. Steven, there are so many immutable options with Veeam. Check out uh, some of the other shows we've done on the Friday Tech Bytes uh, show series. It's probably time to do it again, though. So I'll think of something else to bring up, but good, good shout. Short answer, immutable hardened repository, immutable options in the cloud, and Veeam service providers are always out there doing awesome stuff for you. All right. The Monday show is going to be up with Jeff Reichart and talking about your SaaS exit strategy in advance. Ooh, don't lock in your data over there. Love it. So Sam and Jeff are going to rock out that topic. So, hey, Kirsten, thank you so much for presenting with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. And uh, Melissa, pleasure as always. Thanks for having me back, Rick. All right. Well, thank you both our producers, uh, coast to coast. We got this transatlantic combination going on. They've done a great job with the map location. And thank you to the viewers. And as we close out today, got a quick video. Want to give you a preview of Vimon update. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you.